Don't let your dreams be dreams. Fight. For, oh, okay. Oh, well, that, okay. Jesus Christ. What's going on, everybody? My name is Kenneth Felice. Today we're talking about curves. I was going to film this video outside, but now it's starting to rain, and after... Oh, I'm feeling like I should probably just go back inside. So, I'm going to head back to the normal set. Feel free to meet me there after this intro. Curves are one of those things that people acknowledge, but once they play around with them for a second, they're just kind of like, mm, eh, eh, screw that. But believe me when I say they aren't all that complicated. So buckle up. It's time you learned everything you need to know about the curves. The first thing that you need to know is that they're pretty much universal no matter what software you're using, whether it's Snapseed, Lightroom, or even Premiere Pro. Future me, stop editing for a second and show them the curves in Premiere. First of all, don't yell at me. Second, here are the curves in Premiere. And third, he just wanted to show you guys that he could do this effect. Hey, hey, put me back on. All right, all right. All this to say, feel free to follow along with whatever software you have at your disposal. I'm gonna be using Snapseed, but it'll all work the same because curves are curves. The first curve that we're gonna be messing around with is the RGB curve. The reason we call it the RGB curve is because when we manipulate it, we are manipulating the red, green, and blue channels of the image simultaneously. Every image is made up of these three channels, red, green, and blue. It's only when these channels come together that we get our full color image. So now that you know what it is, let me show you how it works. Starting from the left, we have the blacks, the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, and the whites. To start to understand what happens when you move this curve graph up or down, you need to imagine a black to white gradient on the X and Y axis of this curve graph with the blacks meeting at the origin or the bottom left corner. Ugh, that was a mouthful. I've placed these gradients here on the screen for your reference, but most softwares aren't gonna show you them, so you kinda just gotta remember that they're there. Yeah. The last thing you need to have before we actually start moving this thing to edit is a basic understanding of the histogram. The histogram is this graph here that you see at the bottom, and it's basically just a representation of the data in your photo. It shows you how much of what tones are in your image. It's easier to understand if everything's in black and white. So basically the software takes pixels in your photo and categorizes them based off of what it thinks they are, black, white, or any gray in between. A large stack of black pixels over here on the far left would mean that there are a lot of black pixels or an underexposed image, and a lot of pixels on the far right could mean a overexposed image, a lot of white pixels. Those are the only two histogram graph types that you're probably gonna wanna avoid unless you're going for a underexposed or overexposed look intentionally. So starting again from the left, we have the blacks. The blacks are best defined as the darkest parts of the image in which there is no more detail. So literally just black. When you lift the blacks, you're telling the software that anything that it considers black, you want to be more of a gray or whatever you end up pulling it up to. That's exactly how you achieve that faded film look. Knowledge. Moving up the line, we have the shadows. Like the blacks, the shadows are also defined as the darkest parts of the image. The difference is these are the darkest parts of the image that still contain detail. When you pull up on this line, you're lifting the shadows, which makes them a little bit less intense, a little bit less deep. And then to pull down on this line, deepens the shadows, makes them darker, more intense, sometimes adds a nice contrast, but don't overdo it. Midway up the line, we have the mid-tones. And as the name suggests, these are the middle ground between the darkest and brightest tones in your image. This is where you're gonna wanna go to edit skin tones or anything that's really well exposed in your photo. Next, we have highlights. Highlights are best defined as the brightest parts of the image in which there is still detail. Moving this line up will increase the highlights, sometimes adding contrast, sometimes adding a nice punch, and then bringing them down can decrease the highlights, making them less intense, sometimes bringing back detail that was lost in the brightness. But like every other part of the curves, don't overdo it. The name of the game with the curves is subtlety. Be subtle. Just chill, relax. And last but not least, coming in at exactly zero pounds. On the far right, we have the whites. The whites are the brightest parts of the image in which there is no detail. If your histogram shows a spike on the far right side underneath of the whites, that's a good old fashioned sign that your photo is overexposed. If there was information that you wanted to bring out that was lost in the whites, you're gonna need to consider retaking it. Sorry. You can pull this part of the curve down to make the whites more of a gray or completely black if you want. The last thing you're gonna need to know about the curves is how to edit individual channels and the luminance. It's in the individual color channels that many famous editors get their own signature style or look to the point where you know whose photo it is before you even look at their handle. In whatever software you're using, look for red, green, and blue dots. These are gonna be your color channels. Now that I'm in the red channel, if I pull up on this line, I'm gonna be adding red to the image. This follows the same rules that we've already discussed. If you pull up on the bottom left here, you're gonna be adding red to the 
the shadows, pull up in the middle here, you're gonna be adding red to the midtones. Top right, you're gonna be adding red to the highlights. Everybody knows that. What many people don't know is that when you pull down this line, you're actually adding the inverse color. This is based on the RGB color wheel. And on that wheel, every color has an opposite. So if you wanna lessen a color's effect in a photo, you add its inverse to that area. The inverse of red being cyan, green being magenta, and the inverse of blue being yellow. With that knowledge, just start messing around with the color channels, even if you don't feel comfortable with it yet. Say like here in this photo, if you wanted to lessen the effect of the green in the grass, you could pull down on the shadows, which will make the green a lot less green, which adds magenta to the photo overall, but it lessens the impact of the green. Or if you wanted to add some yellow to enhance the sunset, you can go into the blue channel and pull down on the highlights, which will make the sky look a lot more golden. And last but certainly not least, we have the luminance curve. This curve acts very similar to the RGB curve, but it only affects light. Because the RGB curve is a combination of your three color channels, it actually affects the colors when you move it around. So if you wanted to lessen the brightness or deepen the shadows or something and you didn't want to affect color, you come to luminance. So here I'll add contrast by deepening the shadows and raising the highlights a little bit. And you'll see how that affects the photo before, after. Here's a side by side of the same S curve, one just using the luminance curve and the other using the RGB curve. Let me know in the comments if you can tell the difference. Okay, so now that you know what the curves are, how they work, and how to use them, here's a couple of quick tips to get you started. Make sure you know how to add and remove anchor points. To do that, touch the line anywhere that adds anchor points, and then to remove them, drag them either all the way up or all the way down off of the graph, like so. Probably the most common curve shape is the S curve, which is just adding contrast to your image. To do this, bring down the shadows by pulling down on the line and then pull up on the top right to increase the highlights. This is quite literally contrast. If we pull away here before, after, you'll see the contrast was added. We touched on this earlier, but another cool curves trick you need to know is how to make that faded film look. To do this, all you need to do is add an anchor point in your shadows, maybe bring them down a little bit, and then raise the blacks however much you want, but pretty much right around here, and then pull down on your highlights. Maybe not much, but just enough to kind of balance it out. Then if you get this shape right here, is when you get that faded film look. To increase the effect of the fade, all you need to do is bring the blacks up higher, to decrease the effect, just bring it down lower. I usually leave it right around here, just a little bit beneath the anchor point that I put for the shadows. Make sure to take good advantage of your anchor points by placing them down strategically to make the line not move in certain places. Personally, I like to add an anchor point here for my shadows, here for my midtones, and here for my highlights before I even start editing. And then I just kind of play with them and see what I want to do. And if I need to remove one, then I'll take it off and then move things around to kind of edit how I need to. Whew. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Now that is everything you need to know about the curves. Now that you know all this, go out there, get started, edit some photos, join the community over on Instagram, link in description, and don't forget to tag me in your photos. I'm giving out double taps like candy. I really sincerely hope you found this video helpful. If so, make good use of that like button and please, please, please subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next one. That took 37 years to film. Somebody call a chiropractor.